Alrighty, fellas, we hit 250k subscribers, so it's time for the Lucio Guide. I am not an educational player at all, and honestly, this info might be terrible. But people are asking for it. No one else has really made a guide, so why the hell not? It might be fun, yeah? Woo! Alright, let's talk about the settings you need to have on for Lucio. Number one being backwards wide. Uh, this pretty much is what it what it is. You know, you're backwards wide. That's it. You need to have this on. I don't know why this is off by default. I, it should literally be default in Lucio's kit. Next is more jump and release. And what this does for you is whenever you go on a wall, you just auto jump off it. You know, you basically don't have to press the jump again. But if you want to get off the wall without jumping, you crouch. Uh, that's it. It kind of feels like training wheels. I don't really like it. If you want to use it, it's up to you. But I think for a lot of people, this is going to be really uncomfortable. So it's up to you. And finally, we have hold a crossfade, which I have on. What this does is whenever you're holding your crossfade button, you will swap to speed. So you're on heels no matter what, unless you're holding, you know, your crossfade button. The reason why I use this is I used to be very tunnel vision on never healing my team. Still kind of am. And this was kind of the way I fixed it. So if I'm holding down the button, that means I'm speeding. If I'm not, I'm healing. I think it's kind of good, but it might be uncomfortable for a lot of players. So use it if you want. Uh, finally, we have my Lucio controls. I use right click for jump, spacebar for crossfade, and mouse five for boop. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit different. It's just what I feel comfortable with. You don't have to use this setup. You can use default Lucio setup and you will still get good at the game over time. And for my console players, I hear using the bumper buttons to jump is a great alternative to using A or X. Apparently A or X just feels terrible, especially since you're going to be spamming jump a lot. So yeah. So to conclude this section, use what you're most comfortable with. However, backwards war, I'd please turn it on right now. Go. <laughs> for this section, we're going to go down Lucio's abilities with some tips, stuff you need to be doing more of it. All that sort of mumbo jumbo. Yeah. Alrighty, so Lucio's main weapon is a four round burst projectile. It's slightly slower than Genji's projectiles and only does 20 damage to the body and 40 to the head. This actually does a lot of damage if you're consistent with your shots. However, we all kind of suck at aiming with this character because Lucio is pretty hard to aim with. The way you aim consistently with Lucio is based on distance and where you think the enemy is going to go. You also need to factor in if you're on the wall or if you're jumping or anything like that, which I will get into later, so stay tuned. With Lucio's weapon only having 20 bullets in the clip, you need to remember before you go for a fight, 1v1 with someone, make sure your gun is fully loaded. Lucio's reload is around about just over a second, so this can be really much a big throw, and things like boop or melee does cancel your reload, which I've done several, several times. So, make sure you reload before you go fight people, okay? It's good to remember too, Lucio has no fall off damage. So in between fights or if you're at chokes or anything like that, you should always be shooting just to get some damage off, build some more ult charge. And who knows, you might get a lucky pick, but probably not. Anyways, a good time when I also use this is when I'm versing a Sombra and I'm trying to find out where she is before she engages on my team with a hack. I'm just constantly shooting, trying to find out where she is. Lucio actually has a really good burst combo, so something that I've been doing a lot recently is getting up in my enemies' faces a lot more if it's safe to do so. The burst combo is 4 round burst, boop, then melee. This is around about 125 damage, but if you can't hit your shots, it's 55 damage. This combo works really good against any sort of 200 HP character, even tanks maybe, but it's especially really good against flankers like Tracer, because Tracer has 150 HP. If you can only hit the boop and melee, that's pretty much almost 50% of her health, and she's going to recall half the time. Speaking of boop, we're now going to talk about Lucio's greatest ability of all time. The boop! Lucio's boop, very simple ability. You boop, enemy gets knocked back, that's it. The main thing about Lucio's boop is when you- Viola! Oh my god! The main thing about Lucio's boop is knocking people off the map for the cheeky environmental kill. However, in Overwatch 2, with tanks not being able to move at all because of the new passive, and most of the DPS heroes having a lot of mobility, it's very hard to get boop kills off the map now. When I tell you I have 5,746 limbs and only 119 environmental kills, I'm telling you now, it's hard, man. It might be a skill issue, actually. I don't know. Me, personally, I displace enemies with boop instead of just, you know, going for boop kills 24-7. So in this clip here, Red Dog's chilling on high ground. I decide, you know what? He shouldn't be up here. I boop him down. My team follows up on the kill. And we get a huge snowball capping the point because of it. We then later lost this game. But still, my point stands. You should be trying to knock people into your team for cheeky kills. Or let's say a soldier is just chilling up on high ground. Just gunning down your team. Ready to one shot your entire team. You knock her off high ground. She's in a really bad position. Boom. Easy kill. Yum yum my tum tum. It doesn't always have to be high ground, by the way. If someone's in a bad position, just go ahead and punish it whenever you can. It's also important that Lucius Boop gets countered by Barriers, Bubbles, and Kiriko's Cleanse. However, it can go through Sigma's Eat, Diva's Eat, and Genji's Deflate. So if you want the extra 25 damage if they're really, really low, you can use that. If you want to one-up yourself even more and do some absolutely crazy shit, you can stop a lot of movement abilities with Lucio's boop. And the biggest example right now is probably Winston. And I think Winston's crawling back into the meta slowly, but unfortunately, Rodogs exist, so, you know... See this clip here where Winston starts getting low and he obviously turns around and be like, oh man, I'm going to escape, I'm going to get away. 
I timed the boot perfectly, so when he jumps, his jump gets cancelled, and we get a free kill because of it. Let's see that shit. That was so good. People just think that Winston was idiot. No one actually complimented. I'm really upset. Can I get some praise for once, bro? And obviously, the most important thing is if enemies are getting too close to your heels or DPS or anything, you just boop them away. Yeah. Seriously, with Romacho coming out soon, you're going to need to boop that guy away. That guy is a menace. Now, we're going to talk about Lucio's speed, heal, and amp it up ability. So, fun fact of today, you can actually heal your team. <laughs> I know, it's it's funny, I know. You got a big circle around you, it goes up to 12 meters, and you can have all your teammates uh, being healed or sped up all at once. It's actually really, really great, but you might notice it kind of feels weak, and that's why we have the Amp Up ability, which buffs those abilities for three seconds before going on a 12 second cooldown. So if you use this at the wrong time, you're in big trouble. Now, the reason why Lucio almost has a 100% pick rate in the higher ranks and Overwatch League is pretty much because of the speed boost. You can use speed boost in so many situations, for example, speeding towards an enemy when they're out of position. Or, if an enemy's using a scary ultimate, you can speed away and boop him away because what's he going to do? If your team's struggling to get through choke, you can speed him through the choke so they're harder to hit. All sorts of situations. But when should you use amp heal? Whenever your team needs healing? I, I don't know, man. However, this is solo cure at the end of the day. So most of the time, this happens. Look at this, ready? I call it speeding in. <laughs> Walk in! You're a tank! My tank then flamed me that game. This was also a top 500 lobby, which is even more funny. To fix this issue, you're better off watching your team when they're looking to engage or push through a choke, and then you want to speed them, because most of the time, no one communicates in ranked. Get off the grain. But let's say a Winston and Genji, they're diving your Zenyatta. Your Zenyatta's like, oh my god, I'm dying. You decide to heal him up. He dies. Instead, it's better to speed him away from the danger. The support pass is going to kick in that heals him up over time. You can boop him away if they get close, and hey, you survive because you sped him away from danger. Yeah! But this is solo queue, right? All you need to do is just find one person on your team that you can speed around and work with super well. If there's a Roadhog look and a flank, just go with him. Genji there wants to dive the back line. Go with him. Just find someone. Or just get a duo. I don't really know, man. You guys probably have friends, right? Also good to remember that Lucia's aura is affected by line of sight, so anyone behind a wall, anything like that, you won't be able to heal or speed him. It works similar to the Mercy Beam, where it will stick around for about a second before going away. The last thing I wanted to talk about is crossfade spamming. Uh, this is when you swap between speed and heal constantly. This is something I do a lot. I'm going to be real. This is not a good thing to do. This is a really bad habit I have that I cannot fix. Uh, as you can see in this clip here, as soon as I swap to speed, the heals stop my team. Same thing goes. Speed, swap to heals. The speed immediately stops my team. There's like a very small like millisecond where it's there, but you know it's, it's gone pretty quickly. So I don't recommend doing this at all. So don't do it. I probably forgot something important, but hey, we're going to be talking about Lucio's beat drop now, aka Spotify Premium. <laughs> Who the fuck is laughing? All right, so Lucio's beat, you do a little funny jump in the air, you slam down to the ground. Anyone that's in 30 meters gets uh, some shields for around about five seconds. It's very short, but it's considered one of the most strongest ultimates in the game because it can almost counter every ult in the game. Does that make sense? The best way to use beat, in my opinion, is look at what the enemy team is running and think to yourself, hmm. What ultimates can I counter with my ultimate? In most cases, it might be a Neno Genji, or a Sigma ult, or a Soldier and Railgun ult. You know, anything like that. Keep in mind, you don't need to always use it against enemy ultimates. You can use it as an engage tool, disengage tool. If your team's getting low in the middle of a team fight, you can use it to keep them up with that. All sorts of stuff. Every situation is different. Also, make sure you're on the ground right before your beat as well. I see so many Lucio players jump into the skybox right before the beat, and then their entire team dies before they hit the ground. Stop doing it, fellas. Come on. Oh my god. This he just froggered. He just froggered. While Lucio's beat looks like it travels like a projectile, it actually hits all teammates who are within 30 meters and line of sight. However, there's a very small grace period where you can still hit your team with beat if you peek them in time. Like, look at this clip. I go to save Winston Overwatch. I get booped away, but I, the frogger Overwatch, jump into the air to save his life. Wow. You no, know, this world, this world we live in today is a pretty strange world too. Lucio warding is pretty simple, right? You hold the jump key on a wall, you start warding. That's it. But then if you start chaining jumps together, jumping from wall to wall, you start to go faster and faster. There's a couple of things you can use Lucio warding for. The main ones being gap closing, disengaging, making yourself harder to hit, and the greatest one of all time, rollouts. Rollouts is when you go from spawn all the way to point as fast as possible or wherever your team is located, you know. And since you're going to be feeding a lot of ranked games, dying in the enemy backline constantly, you need to learn rollouts. 
Please don't feed ranked games. I don't want to get flamed by YouTube comments again, man. I'm tired of it. To explain Lucio Rods, you want to make sure you're aiming where you want to go and holding the forward key while jumping constantly at the same time. You obviously don't want to be doing sharp turns because it can absolutely mess up your rollouts, so you want to be smooth with it the entire time. Obviously, you might struggle learning some of the higher level rollouts at first, but over time, you will slowly get better. But however, if you're still struggling, it's worth going into custom games and just practicing. If you can get to the point one second faster or 10 seconds faster, that's still good at the end of the day rather than just walking from spawn all the way to point. The one rollout I recommend you should try and learn is the Legion Garden rollout, pretty much because it's the most valuable rollout in the entire game. I do this rollout in my ranked games all the time and 50% of the time I will get a boot kill to start off the fight. Or if not, I can just go back to my team and you know, no one really cares. The reason why it's worth learning this rollout is because you can take so many paths to the bridge and get the same results every single time. That's why I think it's important that you learn your own paths. If some of the higher level rollouts aren't working for you, just try your own rollouts and see how it goes. And who knows, you might find a really fast rollout people don't know about. Something that's really cool is that you can change the height of your jumps by just looking up a bit more. Which leads to some situations where you can get to some areas that you weren't able to unless you used a bunch of jumps. This also goes for looking downwards too because this actually allows you to get through more tighter areas I believe. I'm not fully sure but I'm pretty sure this is how it works. And that's kind of just the basics of warriding I can really teach. There are a lot better warriders out there and that know more stuff than me. For example, SK is a great example so you should go check her out if you can. But now we're going to get into movement. Now, in this part, I want to talk about making yourself harder to hit when it comes to 1v1s or just in general. So, you know, even if you have bad positioning, you can still be a god of just never getting hit because you just move left and right like a god. First off with the AD spam, which means moving left and right at a very fast pace. You don't want to do this very, very fast. You want to do this at a nice smooth pace. Otherwise, your model's going to glitch out, making you much easier to hit. But if you do it correctly, this is how you look. Do keep in mind if you're moving forwards or backwards while AD spamming, your model is much easier to hit because you don't do the uh, goofy animation. So keep that in mind. You also need to be as unpredictable as possible when it comes to moving left and right because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, people are going to figure out what you're doing. This is why we add in more to the left or maybe more to the right and adding in crossfade spamming as well to give us a little bit of speed boost more to the left or more to the right as well. Left, right, left, right, Jesus. It's also important with any sort of movement that you need to be using your environment to your advantage. Any sort of things you can hide behind to take cover or anything you can jump off to get to the enemy more closely, you should be using. Take a look at this clip, right? After we absolutely decimate the soldier, I decided to jump on the one-shot character herself, soldier. And she's like, oh my god, it's Frogger Overwatch. I need to run away. She tries to slow me. I'm like, whatever. And there's this perfectly placed tree. I hide behind it for a bit. I jump around. Boom. Smack. Bob's your uncle. That's it. It's just that easy. Use the environment to your advantage. Any sort of stuff you can hide behind, use it. Now we got this clip against Zebra, the god of Doomfist, who wants to put me in a YouTube video. But no, I decide to jump on the wall when he has empowered punch. Dodge it. Break his ankles. Absolute crazy. Last thing I want to talk about is Lucio's Beyblade, where he just spins around like an absolute maniac, and that's why we call it the Beyblade. The way you do it is simply by looking down at the ground, moving left and right, and then start swinging your mouse from the left and right as well in like this kind of arch fashion, I guess. And then you add an amp speed, and you're even more harder to hit. This is really situational, but if you want to make your friends laugh or absolutely tilt the living hell out of an enemy because they can't hit you because you're moving so fast, I mean, yeah, go for it. That's the best way to use it. Another important thing with Moon as well is to confuse the living hell out of your enemy and make them have to look around a lot. Jumping over their head in 1v1s is by far one of the best ways to confuse the living hell out of them. So do that as well. The playstyle I'm most well known for is being more of a DPS Lucio. I try to go for kills when necessary while still supporting my team whenever I feel like it. Not because I want to, whenever I feel like it. So in most games, if I'm just chilling and I see an opportunity to go get a kill in their backline, I will take it whenever I can. The whole key with this entire playstyle is confidence. You might lose the 1v1, you might win the 1v1. You don't really know, but as long as you're confident, you might win more than you lose. What the fuck am I saying? So in this clip, I find out the enemy team has a widow. I'm like, sick, cool, I want to go kill that. I kill it, that's great. But then I find out they have a soldier as well. I'm like, you know what? I can kill that as well. I end up killing it. Um, and then I find out Roadhog is unfortunately a character and he killed my entire team. So, what could have I done better there? Nothing. <laughs> And saying this might get me a lot of flack, right? But I just think it's more worth to go for kills no matter what rank you're in. Because most of the time, everyone's getting one shot no matter where you are. And I mean, if your team is stuck at a choke, not doing anything at all, and even though you've tried to speed them through or beat them through anything like that, what have you got to lose at this point? If you're already going to lose the game, you might as well try and get some kills and look cool doing it so you can put it in your montage. The other interesting playstyle that you can do sometimes is being a distraction Lucio. Kind of similar to how Wrecking Ball just runs around the map and doesn't really do anything, but he kind of distracts your team, so your team can actually do stuff. 
and the enemy team isn't really doing much stuff, you know? So sometimes I will try to force 1v2s, 1v3s, anything like that, just so the enemy is more focused on me, while my team can hopefully come up and kill them while they're all distracted. This stuff actually works in any rank. It works in bronze all the way to top 500. People are stupid, man, but you are smart. <laughs> Now that you've become a full-on DPS Lucio, who shuts you down and who counters you? Well, in reality, it's whoever can kill you first. I know that sounds really dumb, but hear me out, right? I think everyone in Overwatch will have their own counters. Some people don't like versing Roadhog. Some people don't like versing Soldier, but some people like versing Widowmaker. I am that person. This is pretty much the characters I have a good time versing and characters I have a bad time versing. It could be totally different for you. You might be a god at 1v1 Hunter or Fire if you're an absolute freak. But for me, I find these matchups a waste of time. But versing Ana, Ash, Widow, all that sort of stuff, much easier for me. For most cases, when it comes to these 1v1s, it's always about baiting out the cooldowns or dodging any sort of their cooldowns. For Ash, for example, you want to dodge her Dynamite and Coach Gun. Ana, you don't want to let her nade herself, so whenever you get near her, boop her into the air so she can't nade the ground. For Roadhog, just give up and go get a job at McDonald's. But for a video where I go into more detail about these matchups and how to counter every single hero, I did a video of Kaku recently, so go check that out, linked in the description below. Are these the world's most crispy fries? Let's find out. Something I get asked a lot is how do you improve aiming, aiming while war riding, aiming while naked, all that sort of stuff. So the bad news is, unfortunately, you have to play Overwatch a lot to just get better over time, you know? But I can recommend this uh, game mode, which I used a lot to practice war riding and aiming at the same time. It's great for this sort of stuff. I usually use it before warming up, in between games, all that sort of stuff. So give it a go. Next up is a code called Flanker Duel, which lets you practice against Tracer, Genji, and Doomfist. This is really good for people that just suck at 1v1ing one those people. With Tracer recently getting buffed, she's an absolute freak. So, you know, something like this is really, really good to practice with. So try it out if you haven't already. I know I didn't talk about Lucio Warriding that much, and that's because SK has already made a Lucio Warriding guide that covers pretty much everything you need to know within 10 minutes. It is that good, where if I was to make a Warriding guide, I'd just be plagiarizing that video at that point. So go check it out if you haven't already. Also, I'm going to say this now. A lot of the newer maps in Overwatch 2 absolutely suck ass for Lucio because if you're trying to climb walls, there's a bunch of things that get in the way. So if you suck at warning, don't stress. It might be the map fault. You can blame it on the map. However, Shambhaling is goaded. I love this map so much. Now, this is a question I get asked a lot. What are the best stats for Lucio? Best healing, best damage, best death count, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to be honest. I don't really care about stats, and this is just my opinion, right? But I think focusing on stats can kind of put you on tilt or make you play bad in games. Like, for example, I had a game where I was out damaging both my DPS. And because I was so focused on that, it made me not really care about anything else in the game. And I played terribly that game. So I stopped focusing on stats. And the only thing I really care about is my death count, right? If I have eight deaths in five minutes, yeah, I'm positioning terribly. Or I need to play with my team. Or I need to stop 1v1 the Roadhog and then complain, dude, he's one-shotting me. This is so broken, you know, all that sort of stuff. Obviously, you know, heal your team. You don't want to have 800 healing by a five minute mark, all that sort of stuff. But I'm just saying, uh, I think focusing on stats can kind of put you on tilt and it can make you play worse, you know? So for support synergies, I think Lucio Kiriko is the most strongest at the moment and it probably will be the strongest for a very long time. I think Lucio Ana is also really good. Lucio Moira is really good. Even Lucio Zen works every now and then. Everyone says that the worst support comp, however, is Lucio Mercy because Lucio can't focus on speeding and Mercy can't focus on damage boosting. Yeah, I think it is pretty bad. But at the same time, we're playing solo queue at the end of the day, so anything can happen, right? I've won several games with uh, Skietsi on my team, and they're really good at Mercy. So, you know, take it as you will. You might win more games playing Lucio Mercy than you do Lucio Kiriko at this point. Who bloody knows? Moving on is when do you swap off Lucio? Uh, I just don't. <laughs> and uh, this isn't super related to Lucio, but make sure you guys are taking care of your wrists, you know, making sure you're not getting wrist pain, taking breaks in between games, all that sort of stuff. I've been dealing with wrist pain for about a couple of years now. It's been pretty bad, but it has gotten better over time thanks to going to the gym and doing some exercises, all that sort of stuff. So make sure you guys take care of your wrists. They're super important, you know? And the last thing is that, yes, people are going to flame you for this playstyle. People are going to be toxic. You could get a bunch of kills. You could be healing a bunch. But if you leave the team for just a second, they are going to lose your minds at you. This happens in every single rank, all the way from bronze to top 500 to quick play. But, uh, we have a Shouldn't have defended you in the first 10 seconds, Lucio. You fucking suck. You're useless. <laughs> so all I got to say is keep practicing and keep having fun with the game. If you're not having fun with Overwatch, Take a break and come back later, you know? Lucio is one of those characters where if you finally master him or pull off some sick play, it's the best feeling ever. So just trust the process. You'll get there. Why well, am I saying this like some sort of motivational speech? <laughs> and that wraps up the Lucio guide, ladies and gentlemen. There's probably some stuff I missed, so feel free to ask in my Twitch stream at FrogRW, my Discord, or in the YouTube comments, and I'm happy to help out whenever I can. 
There'll also be some additional resources linked in the description, so make sure you check that out as well. Thank you guys for being really patient about this guide. It took a lot more longer than expected. I'm really new to educational stuff, so I'm not really good at it, but I hope it helped at the end of the day. Hopefully you guys climb to a new rank and then you can send it to me on Twitter and be like, yeah, you know, all that sort of stuff. Anyways, much love and I'll see you guys in the next one. Good luck.